Hello there. It's me, Miss Salemi. Unmasked. Don't worry though, there's no kids in here. It's just me. So, I just wanted to pop in today and give you guys some updates on what my classroom is like right now in our hybrid synchronous model and give you guys a little bit of an updated class tour. Follow me, let's flip the camera. All right, so here it is, my happy place. Computer Lab 129. Isn't it beautiful? Here's my desk, my mask I just took off. It's a little bit of a mess right now, but it's because I'm very busy, 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 busy. I need to stop putting my finger in front of the camera. That would be great, right? So we're going to begin the class tour right over here. So you can see my new creation. That's not really coming up on the screen, is it? Is it kids? All right. Let's try that again. I'm just going to walk over here so you can see the screen. So you may have noticed on my channel, I've been publishing a lot of screensaver videos. It might seem really random. It's not something that I've done in previous years, but I just want to show you first why I'm doing it and like what I'm using it for. So whenever I'm teaching synchronous hybrid um, remote learning for the current state of the world, I'm required to always have my screen on because there's kids at home that are also engaged in our class. And rather than just showing like nothing on the screen or just like a static image of like the kids and all of their little thumbnails in the Google Meet, I like to put screensavers up on the screen just for the vibes. And the kids seem to really like them. So this Among Us screensaver, I actually programmed with, uh, with Scratch. And then I converted the Scratch program into JavaScript so I can run it locally right here on my PC. It looks really simple, but it was actually a lot more complicated than you think, this, this program. Because each of the individual astronauts need to bounce off of each other. And in order to do that, they need to be treated in code as three-dimensional objects in space. So a very simple idea that I had ended up being a heck of a lot of math, you know, physics. So anyway, let's move along. I worked, it, was, it, it wasn't easy to do. That's why we're um, just enjoying it for a few more seconds. All right, let's continue through the classroom. We still have our LED lights up everywhere. And here's my calendar for February. February is my favorite month because it's the month of my birthday. I didn't write it on my calendar yet. I'm still in the process of updating my February calendar. I have all the kids' birthdays on here, but my birthday right now, I just have it circled. So don't forget, my birthday's coming up. Cool, exciting. Anyway, so let's continue the tour. Over here, we have the lab PCs. So when the classes come in in person, I have all of the children sit every other computer. They sit at every other computer. That way, I can be sure that everyone is safely socially distanced throughout all of their time here in the classroom. Over here, you'll also find my lovely cleaning supplies that I use to sanitize each of the desks and all of the areas after every class to make sure that everyone is safe and healthy and avoiding germs as much as possible. Here I just have my little innovation chalkboard for my seventh grade innovators. And then I have my Cartesian plane up here for my robotics students. So when we learn how to code, I can actually show them the Cartesian plane. And I try to spice it up a little bit by adding the scratch cat and fun little things because I find that a lot of students will see this and react like, oh no, this isn't math class. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, calm down. I understand that, but okay. So then I say, what is this? Do you know what this is? And they say, it's the coordinate plane. I said, okay, well, what is it used for? And then I relate it to 
something really cool like this and where each of the astronauts would land on the coordinate plane and just make it very clear that, okay, you might be annoyed with this in math class right now, but here's what it does. Here's what it can do. I'm just trying to make those connections, have the children establish, you know, a positive attitude about mathematics to relieve some anxiety, which I know I've read research on can be a problem for a lot of kids in their formative years, myself included, I'll be honest. You shouldn't have to find out that you're good at math, you know, when you're in college. You should have the confidence to do well in it at all times and build cool robots and stuff. There's my robot lab over here. I'm trying to skip past that part right now because it's, it's a little bit disorganized at the moment. And usually I like to keep it perfect, as I've stated in previous videos. But that's not what today's video is all about. This is just a quick update of the lab. And I also wanted to show you guys what my setup was for synchronous teaching. So in case you don't know, synchronous teaching is when I have students in the classroom and then there's children who are also logged on to my class live from home, which I think is a really cool thing. But I wanted to figure out how to do this like the best possible way in order for all of the kids to feel like they're a part of the actual class in person and receive the same high quality education as all of the other kids. All right, so that brings me to my next contraption over here. This might look like a mess, but really this is my latest innovation. So in seventh grade technology, we learn about the invention process, innovation, solving problems, these kinds of things. And I had a problem. So when I take attendance in the morning, and during my classes, I sit here, I have a wireless keyboard connected to a PC in the back of the room, which then goes up through, the wires go through the ceiling and then up to the projector. So, and it's, <laughs> it's not connecting right now. All right, oh yeah, in my program, if you hit the space bar, the backgrounds change. He. All right, let me just hit escape real quick. So this is my setup for where I can use the projector and the big screen where I can project my lessons and teach. So when I'm taking attendance, let me go back to my friends here. So when I'm taking attendance, I have my wireless keyboard set up right here with my wireless mouse connected to the big screen. Next, I have my handy dandy little Chromebook that I use to actually take attendance. So I will have the meet on the screen, just showing the feed of the kids' names, just in case for when I call their name and they don't, if they don't hear me, I can see if they're, if they're online or not. Then I post attendance on the Chromebook and we're good. So that was fine for a while. And I thought it would be really cool to use a microphone like this. Because a like, microphone like this with a cord, I can stand up, I can walk around, um, it just, it's just fun to hold a microphone. Who, who wouldn't agree with that, right? But then I encountered a problem. Here, let me show you where it, was, where it happened. This is the scene where it happened. So I was teaching a lesson right here. Doot, 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 doot. And it got to a point in the lesson where I'm talking on my microphone and I had to also use the keyboard and the mouse at the same time. And I don't have three hands. So I realized I needed a microphone stand and I don't have a microphone stand. So how are we gonna solve this problem? We're going to innovate a creative solution. We're gonna build something. So I built my own microphone stand, as you can see it here. That's the exact perfect height needed for the kids to be able to hear me. Cause that was another issue. If I put the microphone down near the keyboard, they wouldn't be able to hear me. So I needed a perfect microphone stand. It's exactly this tall. It's about 12 inches tall. And to make this beautiful contraption, I took two large cardboard tubes. See this right here, this is the first tube and then the second tube rising up here vertically. And then I hot glued them together and it took a lot of hot glue to um, connect these two tubes, believe it or not, a lot more than I thought. 
then I realized in retrospect, maybe I should have cut a hole in the bottom of the tube and then just stuck in the top one. But then that wouldn't have worked either because the microphone would be too low. So this was actually the perfect height and I wanted to work with it. And I had a lot of hot glue sticks. So I kind of had some fun with it. And I think it looks kind of cool. So we just kind of went with it. Next, for the next phase, before I, I, I figured out how to do this little piece, I actually just had a little scrunchie at the top. And then I would just slide the microphone in through the scrunchie like that. But it wasn't really a permanent solution. It was just me working through some of the, some of the steps in the seven step problem solving model. Right, seventh grade tech? So in order to make the perfect little slot for the microphone, I took a piece of paper I rolled it up around the physical microphone so it would be the exact size of the mic or a little bit bigger. I want to give it a little bit of wiggle room. And then I hot glued that paper right onto this piece of the tube. And then I coated that in lots and lots and lots of hot glue. Doesn't that look cool? So now I have a perfect little mic stand that I can use for my remote lessons. Isn't that neat? I think it is. So let's continue the tour. What else? What else was new? What else is new? What else is going on? All right, let me flip the camera again. I want to show you my other setup. So there's two setups in here that are specifically created for remote learning and synchronous teaching. So my first one is in the back of the room. It connects to the big screen. The second is here right at my desk here step into my office and i'll show you so here i have a microphone like this that i purchased on amazon oh my goodness there's someone at the door hang on who could it be hang on i'm putting my mask on Oh, boys and girls, we have a visitor. Hello, Mrs. Thomas. Hello. Say hi. <laughs> Isn't that exciting, boys and girls? I love getting visitors. <laughs> I always make sure to remember to put my mask back on when I get a visitor, too, to yep. keep everybody safe and healthy. Well, that pretty much wrapped up my tour anyway. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And have an <laughs> awesome day. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Peace out.